So you ready? And welcome to You Have Real Estate with me, attorney Justin Clark. Whether you're a first time home buyer, seasoned investor, or even looking to sell your home, this next 30 minutes is designed just for you. Think about hitting multiple open houses, all from your living room, but with my attorney advice throughout the way. Any questions whatsoever, have people standing by for you. The phone number, 407 205 04 Zero, zero. If you want to start your house hunt this weekend, Dallas Lehman, with you have mortgages standing by to get you pre-approved. No one's going to go show you any houses until you get that pre-approval letter. Call Dallas now. Same phone number, 407-205-0400. Great show today. You will not want to miss a single minute. But first, the opening statement. You know, I think Florida may quite possibly be the best state right now for home ownership in the entire country. Average property taxes here. Meanwhile, we have no state income taxes, you know, but the average property taxes here are somewhere right in the middle. I mean, our property taxes are way less than some states that even have a state income tax, 22nd in the nation to be exact, when you look at average property tax. But also, you know, many of those states that have property taxes that are less have a state income tax. So I think it's great to buy a house right here in Florida. And I know what you're thinking. Well, yeah, Justin, but prices are way up over the last year during this pandemic. Yes, prices have gone up. I totally agree with that. But if you look at the national average, look at the median house price nationally, Florida's 24th, right in the middle. Yet we have beaches, we have beautiful weather, yet we're right in the middle when it comes to house prices, even with the prices going up as they have over the last year, which is why I think that Florida is really the best state in the country right now for home ownership. But when you buy a home, it's not about the 300,000 that you pay or the 400,000 or 200,000 that you're paying for your house. Really at the end of the day for us normal folk, it's really the payment that we're making every month. Our mortgage payment is what matters. We know how much money we make. We know what we're getting every two weeks after taxes. And then we need to pay attention to what our mortgage payment is. Your mortgage payment is made up of PITI, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance. Today's show is all about that T, the tax part of it. And I'm gonna tell you ways today to save money on your mortgage payment by lowering that T portion of your monthly mortgage payment. And we're gonna do so by asking real questions. Now it's time for real questions every Saturday, right here on You Have Real Estate, we ask real questions to the truly trend-setting people in Central Florida's real estate community. Today on the show, happy to welcome back Stephen Bader, the CEO of IQ Power Solar. Hello, Steve, how are you? I'm well, thank you for having and me. And for the first time, Seminole County property appraiser David Johnson is here. How are you, David? Great, Justin, thanks, thanks, thanks for, for having coming. Us. And also, after our first break, we're gonna bring Eric Mock up, who has some great properties to show you as well. He's a great real estate agent here in town, so you won't wanna miss a single minute. Steve, let me start with you. I've bragged on this show a 100 times about how I went solar. I went solar with IQ Power Solar. I love it. I've been saving money on my electric bill for the last year and a half now. Literally, I was at $500 a month on my electric bill in the summer, which is absurd. Now I'm at $50, $60 a month, which is great. Also, at the end of the year, when I filed my taxes with the IRS, I saved $10,000, all because I went solar, all because I did it through you guys. But there's another little secret that a lot of people don't know about when it comes to solar, and that is that, number one, there's no sales tax, so you don't have to pay sales tax on your solar. But also, it's adding, we've talked about it a million times, solar adds value to your home. I have no doubt in my mind. You have a neighbor, their electricity bill is $500 a month. You have solar on your house, your electricity bill is $50 a month. Whose house are they going to buy? It adds value to your house. But Steve, okay, it adds value to my house, which means my property taxes go up, right? Incorrect. And why is that? Your property taxes do not go up with a qualified solar investment. Um, it's protected against property tax increase. So, you know, when you invest in solar, you're going to end up with one of the higher property values per square foot with the, with the lowest property taxes. It's one of the incentives. Unfortunately, I mean, some of the things you said, no sales tax and um, increase in home value and, increase in, you know, no increase in property tax, it's kind of something that the solar shopper is just kind of taking for granted. You know, they don't really understand how valuable that is. A lot of people make the decision without considering you know, they're, they're not thinking they want to sell their house. But the fact is that shouldn't be 
undervalued. It's a really important thing. Not to mention, you know, because if something happens, you want to sell your house in eight years, you're going to have a very real property value increase. And if you don't, if you don't agree with that, our programs, you can transfer them to the to the next buyer, which would be foolish. So far, we've never had someone that sold their house want to transfer the debt to the next buyer instead of getting the property value increase. So that's proof in the pudding right there. Yeah. I mean, it's just one of those things where if you add uh, an addition to your house or, or put a pool in, obviously your, your house value is going to increase. But generally speaking, that's also going to increase your taxes every month, therefore increasing your monthly mortgage payment, that P-I-T-I, -I, that T part of it is going to increase when you add value to your house. However, solar, I know for a fact has increased the value of my house, but it has not increased my monthly payment because the taxes didn't go up. And I mean, who better, I guess, to test that theory? Maybe we're wrong. I don't know. Let's ask the property appraiser there in Seminole County. Uh, are we right? You're both exactly right. Oh, good. Uh, and it's not just because you're making it up, Steve, yeah. Justin, or Steve makes it up. It's stat state law. Uh, and to Steve's point, the incentive is there to put solar on to uh, and, and not cause a tax consequence. Exactly. So uh, that's exactly there. Right? And when we look at that, that tax portion of our monthly mortgage payment, it can be a substantial amount, sure. obviously. So you, you look at the principal, you look at the interest, the taxes and the insurance. A lot of people, I think, David, forget that that tax portion can sometimes be lowered by doing what? The filing for homestead exemption. And, and the key for filing for homestead exemption not only in Seminole County, but throughout the state of Florida, is it has to be your primary residence, and you have to have had title to it as of January 1 of any given year. And it's a very simple process in Seminole County and a lot of my colleagues around the state, and um, we can certainly get into that, but it's going to save you right off the top about $700 a year in annual property taxes. It also gets you into the game of capping the amount that your assessment can go up per year. And, the, and again, this is not David making this up or Seminole County. This is in the state constitution that it's the lesser of 3% or the consumer price index. And so, uh, you know, property values uh, because of sales are going up, you know, 10, 12, mm -hmm. 15% a year. If you've got homestead exemption, you're going to get that $700 savings automatically. And your value is going to be capped this year at 1.4%. So no matter what's going on in the market, as long as it's your primary residence, and you have title to it, you're capped at 1.4%. Huge well, savings. Uh, let's say I'm closing on my primary home, my dream home, my family can't wait to move in. We're closing next week. Sure. How do I file for that homestead protection, and when do I do it? So it's very simple. Again, in Seminole County, we let you pre-file. Obviously, you did not own it as of January 1, 2021, but we will send out this handy little postcard to every new homeowner in Seminole County 30 days after you close. And what we're encouraging folks to do is we're driving them to our website to file online. We get about 70% of our uh, new homeowners filing online. Uh, it takes literally five minutes, okay? And uh, you're pre-filed and you're all done. If you bought your home in 2020 and you have forgotten to file, no worries. Uh, we want you to, again, go back to our website, call our office, uh, and we will walk you through that process. And it's very simple. What if I bought my home in 2017? So if you bought your home in 2017, we can let you file going forward. I can't go back and give you an exemption in 2017. But I, have to, I have to do that, man. You haven't done it yet? No. Oh, you have to. <laughs> All right, Steve. And, and again, one of the – and David's exactly right. I mean, as he would be, he's the property appraiser. One of the biggest parts of that is that when we have a year like this where the prices go up so quickly, right. it limits how much the taxes can go up year over year. You really – need to do now, it. Steve, are you a Seminole County resident? I am. I okay. Yeah. He has a mansion over there next to my house. That's really nice. <laughs> I'm, in the, I'm in the poor part. He's in the bigger section. We, we, will, we will hook you up. <laughs> I appreciate that. If you saw his mansion, he, you would be like, well, why would you not do this? I have this? a $30 electric. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it, it, Steve, it, it does go to my next question actually for you is these HOAs because I live in a homeowners association and and one of the things when I first went solar with IQ Power Solar, I was like, look, I, I don't know if my HOA is going to let me install solar with anyone, let, you know, let alone you guys, because it's an HOA. They get mad if my grass is this big. I got a guy who like drives around taking <laughs> pictures of my grass. So I, I was thinking they probably won't let me have solar at all. What can an HOA do about me installing solar? Well, there's a Florida state statute that doesn't allow them to reject solar. Now, the rhetoric might be confusing. Um, if, if you're not familiar with kind of reading that type of 
rhetoric. It's only a paragraph, though, but let me be very clear. What the HOA is allowed to do is if if the solar is facing, you know, perfect south and, you know, and it doesn't lose an ounce of productivity, they can make it shift it a couple inches to the left or right. But if there's an engineer or the solar company knows what they're doing and says this is where it's most effective, that trumps the HOA's opinion completely. So they can do nothing as long as there's someone that can say, okay, this is where it's productive. I think the point of the story for me was the HOA kind of tried to give me a hard time and Steve stepped in and said, you can't give this man a hard time. And they backed off immediately, which if you know my HOA, I'd tell you, but I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get in trouble with that. I don't want them to make me mow my grass or anything. My HOA is tough and they backed off immediately as, as soon as Steve called them and do yourself a favor. Look, if you want to save money monthly on the electricity bill, save money on your taxes, save money on your property taxes. I love solar. I'm a huge advocate for going solar, but there's no other company in the world that I would use other than IQ Power Solar. And you can reach Steve right now at 407-205-0400. Thank you, Steve, for what you guys did for me. It's great. Um, And Another thing I want to talk with you about, Dave, though, quickly is uh, how do I know if I have that homestead exemption? I think a lot of people don't really know how to how do, do they call you? Do they go to a website? How do I find out? Sure. It's real simple. You can do either or. Uh, you can give us a call. What I would prefer you to do is go on our website. Uh, we have an award-winning website that gets many thousands of hits a day. Um, and it's, uh, if I can get the yeah, site out, it's uh, scpafl.org. Uh, very simple. You go on there. You can pull up your property by your address, by your name. And um, one of the pieces of data that's going to show up on there is does it on their exemptions will say do you have a homestead or not if you just bought your home uh in 2021 like your example you Mm -hmm. gave a second ago and it's going to say on there under exemptions the prior owner had it and you get to inherit that if you will for the rest of the year but it's also going to tell you you really need to file yourself for 2020 to one because it's going to go away in 2022. So yeah. it's very interactive, uh, but certainly you can give us a call and we will walk you through that too. But most folks look it up on the website. Yeah. I, as you know, I had to call your office a couple of weeks ago and the survey, I, you know, most government agencies aren't super concerned about customer service or that. That's the, the rhetoric you will hear. You guys did a really good job for me. And it was, it was like that. Well, I, I take pride in that. And it's not just because it was Justin Clark. We do that for anyone. Uh, customer service was my number one priority. You know, listen, no one likes uh, paying property taxes, but we all work for the citizens of Seminole County, and we should give them the dignity and respect that they deserve. And that's what our, our motto is. So I'm um, glad that you Absolutely. had a good experience. Steve, we got to get your homestead protection. Man. We're going to make sure that happens Absolutely. before the day's over. It's, it's cost you money already. Yes, I'm upset. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to take care of it today. I exactly. appreciate that. Any questions for these? Go ahead, please. Well, well, I will say, Steve's example is not unusual. No, uh, a lot of things, you know, life is busy okay and a lot of people get tied up in many different things and sometimes folks even think they've done it okay my lawn guy quit i didn't even know (laughs) (laughs) and so um that's what we're here for is to walk you through that and uh certainly we can't go back in time but we can go forward so uh, one of the questions i get at my firm a lot is well i'm married and we have a house here and a house over in new smyrna beach can i put my wife as the homestead exemption on the new smyrna and me here yeah the answer is no um, the, the, again, the, the statute's pretty clear. It says you get one homestead per family unit. Now, family unit has never been defined, but the courts over mm-hmm. the years have said, if you're a married couple that's in a you know, consensual relationship, you're, you're, you're a family unit. Yeah, so exactly. We, we have had situations where there are folks who are, uh, they have not divorced, but they have totally separate households. Right. Uh, that are theoretically still married, uh, we can work with them through that, but it's a very laborious process and does not happen that often. A- another, a little bit more complicated situation that I have seen come up is where someone lived in another state, sure. Georgia, North Carolina, or whatever, and then they, they moved here. They legitimately did move here, mm-hmm. but they kept their house up there as a rental property, but they didn't change the house in North Carolina, so to speak, away from being the homestead property and also homesteaded here. How does right. that work with multiple states? So you only get one homestead, uh, whether you know, it's in North Carolina right. or Florida. So we're going to ask you to pick. Do you, where do you want your primary residence to be? Is it Florida? And I will tell you, 99% of the time, <clears throat> it makes more sense for Florida to be your primary resident, as you just eliminated a few minutes ago. There's no state income tax. Um, 
our property taxes are lower than most even right. in Seminole County. Yeah. So for the most part, we have people choosing to call Florida their primary residence. And um, you, know, you can certainly keep the house in North Carolina, but you can't continue to get a, a resident-based exemption up there also. 17 years, I think, you've been the property appraiser, huh? Something like uh, yeah, that. Yes, so, as the elected official, yeah, since, 19, uh, since 2004, yes. Well, oh, what did you do before? Well, so I was just going to say, I've worked in the office since 1986. Oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I graduated from college uh, from Stetson uh, in 1986 with a degree in finance and started working in the office then, so... Does anyone have the uh, audacity to even try to run against you at this point? Well, in somebody two years? did last year. They did, <laughs> but it, it didn't go well for them. Apparently, did it? Yeah, but we, yeah, yeah. Uh, I will say that experience in in this office is one of the it's it's too underrated. Like because mm -hmm. I've had uh, you know I've had multiple clients with houses in Seminole County that had solar, they sold it, they got a value recognition, they bought another house, they called us for solar, and you know he he has been in office since '04. You know, he was uh, he was also working in that office. You know, right after, what was it eighty six? Mm -hmm. Right, right out of right. college. And uh, and man, it, to be honest, if you just now, he obviously doesn't touch every single inspector or appraiser. But I've had two different appraisals. I've yeah. had a home, to, uh, an inspection, and an appraisal to sell, and I've had a I think it's called a price broker opinion when I refied, and both of them. When I just said, hey, you know, you know, we have this system and that system, <coughs> they gave me a fair value, which was within literally. A couple hundred dollars of what I expected, sure. and that's refreshing because I think that the the disillusion, you know, that that people aren't getting a home value increase if they sell, it's 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 just not true. It's yeah. simply not true. Totally you know? right. Here's what I want to do. I want to take a quick break. David, uh, can you come? Can you stick around sure, for a few absolutely. minutes? We're going to do a absolutely. real estate roundtable. I got a bunch of questions coming in they have for you. Okay. Let's take a quick break. When we return, I'm going to bring Eric Mock up because I've I've heard different rumors recently about about this real estate market. I know it's been going up, but is it softening a little bit or is it going to soften as we go through this year? Interest rates kind of changing, maybe going up a little bit. So we're going to ask Eric some questions about that and much more ahead. Stick around. You have real estate. We'll continue.
Welcome back to You Have Real Estate. Thank you for spending some of your weekend here with us. Stephen Bader, IQ Power Solar, is still here. Joined by Eric Mock, real estate agent extraordinaire uh, with You Have Realty. Welcome, Eric. Good to see you again. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, Justin. So, Thanks. people ask me all the time. Obviously, they see me on TV, real estate show. Justin, what's up with this market? I can't believe uh, they're crushing it. There's no inventory. But then I've seen interest rates maybe creep up just a little bit. I've been hearing weird things about no inventory. What is really going on right now in the trenches in the Central Florida real estate market? So in, in literally four weeks, um, starting in February 11, a 30-year fixed rate through Fannie Mae was at 273%. And then four weeks later, it's at 309 So there's obviously a, a slight increase mm -hmm. there in, in the 30-year interest rate through through uh, Freddie Mac, um, the you know year over year numbers are are big. There was a slight adjustment from January to February, just you know this just these uh, last two months, but um, you know over overall the the numbers are up right. and they're they're up you know sizably. When, when do you talk to most of your clients, Steve? When, when people want to go solar with me, for instance, I had on my house two or three years already. I had not just bought it. And I just realized my electricity bill was out of control and I was tired of paying money to, to the man, so to speak. And that's why I went solar with you guys. Did most people call you when they first buy during their ownership? When do they call you? Well, traditionally, we would get a lot of, you know, inbound calls in, in random points of, of their home life. Right. But I would say that our our new home buyer or homeowner inbound calls have increased by probably 25 percent in the last six months. And I don't know if that's just because it's something that they're already thinking about and didn't get on the last house or mm -hmm. because they're concerned about the urgency of different credits and, you know, the ease of ownership. But I will tell you that our interest rates has, have also gone down a bit and they're set to increase again with, with ours, with the solar finance companies. You know, we were told last week that it could happen at the end of this month or in, you know, in April, but it's not as, as um, you know, relevant as a 30 year mortgage, but it's a big difference between two nine and four nine or three nine and five nine. So it, it makes a difference. The rate I also borrowed the money from you know, Steve's company or whatever to to get my solar. I put zero money down. I know you would put zero money down as well, but my interest rate's so low. I mean, so it's low. gone up two points since then. Is that right? Yeah. Well, now is the time I would guess to get into solar, and I, I just got so sick of paying these electricity companies that I had to go solar. Really, you should too. Four zero seven two zero five zero four. Zero, zero. If you're talking to another solar company as well, do me a favor. First of all, call Steve, give IQ a chance, but tell him you want to go see their facility. That, I'm nervous <laughs> awesome. with some of these other solar companies because you're going to call them up and say, I want to see your facility. You're going to end up going in one of these rent the office space things or whatever, because there are so many just sales solar companies out there that don't do what Steve's company, IQ Power Solar, does. Yeah, guys, if the address is sweet 120, <laughs> it's not, it's, here's the thing, there's nothing wrong with that, but the problem is becoming that these, these companies are telling them that they're a full service model and they do their own, guys, we have 12 sales models a month, email and try to contact IQ Power and, and try to sit down and negotiate us installing their contracts, Absolutely. 12 a month, I mean, I would say in the last 20 months, the lowest, the lowest was maybe eight in one month. And we don't do it because we don't know what they promised the customer. We don't know what that customer expects. And um, it's just it's just a mind blowing thing that the models turned into. And just because they tell you that they're a service, one 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 stop shop, you, you just believe them. It's 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 a little bit strange to me. But. Eric, let's take some tours, buddy. You ready? Let, okay. Let's take me to sure. uh, 434 up in Longwood. Tell me about this property. It's a horrible transition. <laughs> so, uh, State Road 434 there in Longwood, it's, it's uh, 538 State Road 434. This is just east of Ronald Reagan Boulevard um, and Sim South Seminole Hospital. Um, it's a commercial building. It's been newly remodeled. It's a two-story. There's an atrium entry with uh, an elevator, as you can see there. On the first floor, it's basically set up as an office, um, conference room. There's break room with a kitchenette. Um, and then on the second floor, it's currently configured as a medical office space. It's got six different patient exam rooms there on that, on that uh, floor. Um, the building total is a total of 6,000 square feet, mm. 
but each floor, when you take out the atrium, you know, the common areas, each floor has 20, uh, roughly 2,700 square feet for office, you know, building process. Yeah, I mean, I think if you own your own business, why rent when you can own this place for uh, a very reasonable amount per month when you look at that mortgage payment? It's yeah. listed It's listed at $1.1 yeah. So it's, um, and as you can see from the photographs, um, very, very nice um uh, office right. building. And you can probably rent some of it out too. All right, take me to Sanford here. This is near the airport, I believe. Yes, this is actually only um, it's it's 5.8 miles, so basically six miles from the from the um, Sanford Orlando Airport, and it's less than a mile from the Sanford Amtrak Auto Train oh. Depot. You know, so it's it's really really close. It's currently um, 10.63 acres, which is 463,000 square feet, you know, a little over 463,000 square feet. And it has the potential to be subdivided, um, these, these 10 acres. Um, I think you see there in that top left-hand corner of that photograph there, that's actually a little gas station that's on that corner. But those two roads, um, McCracken Road and Airport Boulevard, are two highly visible highly um, traveled um, uh, travel zones there. This is currently zoned industrial and it has the possibility for possible mixed use. Beautiful. And so it's, it's a great opportunity. There's numerous uh, industrial things in that area. So there's not a lot of available um, uh, acreage right. in that area. And this one is listed at 1.6 million. Beautiful. You're looking to do a great investment. I think that would be the, the one for you. Give Eric a call. Also, if you're looking for a house or want to sell your house, Eric will be happy to talk to you. 407-205-0400. Eric Mock, great job today, buddy. Thanks, Good Justin. to see you as Thanks. always. Thanks. When we get back, it's time for your portion of the show. It's time for the Real Estate Roundtable. Welcome back to the show. It's time for your portion of the show. It's the Real Estate Roundtable. Throughout the week, all you have to do is go to our Facebook page. You have real estate. Ask me a question right there, and I just might answer it next week right here on the television program. All right, let's go to Bob in Claremont. How does the property appraiser 
uh, de determine the value of my home. David Johnson, you've been doing it for a few years. Yep. How do you do it? Uh, just like any other appraiser would do, we look at the current sales for like properties, comparables, and that's how we come up with the assessed value. Got uh, it. So we're looking at sales all the time. Julio in Melbourne, Justin always brags about his electricity bill going down. Uh, is that possibly true, Steve? I mean, you've seen my bills. <laughs> it's quite specifically true. <laughs> now, I know we have a lot of clients in Melbourne. We have a lot of clients. We've dominated in that whole area from Brevard to Satellite Beach. And FPL, the rates are a little bit lower there, which is a good thing. But, um, you know, we have a lot of clients there that have a very little bill, $10, $15. And Julio, I'm not bragging. I'm just excited <laughs> that I'm not paying $500 a month to these big energy companies that don't care about me. It's not bragging. Uh, Juan over in Hunter's Creek, what do my property taxes actually pay for? So property taxes are the primary funding source for local government. That's schools, that's roads, uh, libraries, parks, that stuff that you come in contact with every day pretty much as a citizen is what local property taxes pay for. David Johnson is your Seminole County property appraiser. Great to meet you in person, buddy. Thanks, Justin. Anything we can Thanks do for to help, us. let me know. And again, you, you get, you're doing a great job over there. Thanks, I, and I mean that with, with all my heart. Stephen Bader, CEO of IQ Power Solar. Thanks for saving me money for the last two <laughs> years. I appreciate that. Absolutely. I calculated the other day. I think I've saved like almost 20 grand at this point. Wow. You still have more than 20 years left in your warranty. I know. It's, so uh, good. it's a beautiful thing. Go, Please go solar. You will not regret it. Thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions whatsoever, it's 407 205 0400. I'm attorney Justin Clark. We'll see you next week for You Have Real Estate. All right.